today it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm and I'm going to talk a little bit about loops and loops in your network and obviously there are many types of loops you can have and the most popular is going to be a layer 2 loop or a layer 3 loop and there are such things as layers 4 through up other loops but 2 and 3 are, are pretty common 2 is going to be a switching loop and a lot of times when you do have a switch and you have spanning tree and it's turned off or misconfigured and there's a lot of ways this can happen you can even have a uh, desktop with two ethernet cards plugged into your network and if they turn bridging on and it's in the same subnet boom you got a layer two loop layer three loops uh, obviously imply layer three being the router in that case uh, the router is uh, looping around for many reasons either misconfigurations with routing i've seen ip helper addresses do that so on and so on and so on. So let's take a quick look. So the first thing is when you get a trace file, because people always ask me how do you start, um, I look for something obvious. So there's a bunch of these broadcast packets and with DHCP you can see that there's this transaction ID which is going to be common for the entire part of the DHCP process, the discover, offer, request, acknowledgement. So you shouldn't see a lot of these, right? Maybe four, maybe five, but you know there's obviously an excessive amount. So we're going to do is filter on this. I don't need this bottom part, so let's get rid of that. View, packet bytes, and that way you get some real estate back. We're going to open up the bootstrap protocol, and there's a transaction ID. We're going to filter on this by right clicking and apply that as a filter and select it. I know you can't see that very well. You know what? Let me just scroll this up a bit, and show you this again. Apply as a filter and selected. There you go, that's better. And now you can see there's my, my filter. And sure enough, you can see, oh yeah, there it is, it's waiting. I was wondering what it was doing. There we go. So <laughs> Wireshark took a second to think about it. And you can see there's all the packets, right? There's a lot of them there. And obviously on the bottom we see displayed and we see packets. So there's a lot, a lot of packets being displayed. Uh, you know, obviously there's going to be uh, too many. We got to find out why best thing we can do is start looking into this detail and we can see the layer 2 address there's a Cisco and there's a broadcast if I click on this one you'll see a different Mac address so you might say well this is really isn't a loop is it well there's a better way to, to approach this let's start looking at the IP header because there's a lot in there we can use and the first thing I want to look for is the identification number and this is a sequential number given to every packet we transmit so this one is 1446 the next one is 1447 8 9 that sort of thing so let's look at the next one See, 1405, right? So the argument is, well, wait a minute. What if you had some of those duplicated? Yeah, sure, that's possible. So let's try to filter on an identifier and see what happens. Right click, apply as filter, and select it. And you can see, again, we got to wait for this because now I've, I've seen that the first time. And now we're done. So you can see with that specific ID, this 1416, there's a lot of them. So now we've gotten fairly specific. It's the same source, destination IP. It's the same IP identifier. Now we can look at the MAC address to see if it's bouncing between, whoops, I double clicked on that one, to see if it's bouncing between two devices. And you can see this is Cisco 3A40, 3Alpha40. And as I move around, it's not changing. Same MAC address. So that tells us something. And I can also say, hey, wait a minute, if this went through a router, the time to live will change. Hmm. Let's take a look at that. There's time to live. 255. And I'm just going to leave my mouse down there. 255, 255. It's not changing. So because the MAC addresses aren't changing and because the time to live is not changing and the identifier is not changing, this is telling me that this is a layer 2 loop. There you go. So now if I grab another trace file, let's take a look at this guy. And this is a little pre-filtered because I wanted to make it a little quicker. And you can see again, same source, same destination. Let's try to apply what we just learned. If you come down here, there's the identifier, 11266. And you can see it's not changing. It's the same number all the way down. And there's the MAC address. You see the MAC address? It's EF, EC, EF, EC. So this is interesting because I can see that the MAC addresses are changing. The identifier is the same. And now let's look at that time to live. It's 126, 126, oh, it's the same. 125, 
125, 124, 124. So you can see it's decrementing by one, which is implying that it's gone through a router. So this would be a routing loop of some kind. In this case, this was actually a helper address that was um, causing some issues. But again, no, nevertheless, it's going through a router. So hope those tips and tricks help you on identifying various loops in your network. And you'd be surprised, you might have a loop today that you uh, might not even be aware of. So take a quick trace, look for your broadcast packets, and see if uh, you have a loop or not. Have a good day. Bye for now.